Folks, good morning. I uh, wanted to take a second out and say hello, and uh, I'm going to make a little two-part mini-series here. I'm going to talk about, uh, in particular, I'm going to talk about drum covers. In part one today, I'm going to talk about the benefits of making drum covers, and uh, in part two, I'm going to come back uh, here very shortly and discuss the challenges of making drum covers. And so, getting right into it here, uh, part one, the benefits, and I know a lot of my videos go a little long, and so I just want to kind of give a, like, a little brief overview here. Um, the benefits, in my opinion, um, um, number one, it'll make you a better drummer. Um, number two, learning songs uh, is, a, is, a, is a nice mental exercise. And uh, number three, recording your progress. Um, you're going to be able to see how you progress, and then uh, potentially you could use that material uh, when, uh, when looking for a gig, when looking for, uh, for a band to play with. Uh, having some, uh, some footage of you playing the drums may be a benefit. So let's dive a little bit deeper into that. Making you a better drummer. All right, so making you a better drummer. So uh, whether you, uh, you read books, whether you go to clinics, whether you uh, uh, watch instructional videos, instructional videos were, back in, were big back in the 80s and 90s, uh, or whether you watch YouTube videos, whether you watch, you, uh, whether you watch uh, Drumeo or, or uh, Steven Taylor or Dex or any number of, um, of professional instructors that are on the internet um, teaching you to be a better drummer, they're gonna, in, inevitably, they're gonna mention about five strategies for you to follow. And, um, and uh, of those five strategies, the most common themes, uh, number one is gonna be to practice. Um, number two is gonna be uh, to play more. Number three is gonna play to, be, uh, to play with people. Um, and number four is gonna be to record yourself. And, um, an important aspect of recording yourself, whether you make, whether you're, uh, you have like super duper audio equipment or not, or whether you have the most basic setup, which by the way, I have a very basic setup, but, uh, but nonetheless, um, uh, recording yourself playing the drums and then going back and watching and or listening to that um, is an invaluable tool in, um, in learning to be a better drummer. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say that, um, that you talk to somebody. Um, when you talk to somebody, uh, you have body language. I mean, obviously I have body language right now. I'm moving my hands around and, 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 and all, but, but nonetheless, you have body language. Um, that, that, that's your communication skills. Your voice has a certain tone to it. Um, you have infl different inflections. Um, we're not necessarily conscious of how we sound because we're thinking about what we're going to say and we're saying it as we're thinking about it. But let's say that somebody recorded that and then you went back and, and listened to your voice or listened to, uh, listened to, to whatever presentation you were giving. And odds are it's going to sound a lot different than you perceived it when you were actually saying it. Um, and that happens with, with, with every single human being that I, I've ever known in my life. When they listen to themselves recorded, they say, I sound like that or, or, or whatever. Well, the same thing is true with you playing the drums. And I think, um, I, I think that a reason that that is the case is because when you're playing the drums, you're thinking about, to some degree, what you're doing, but you're also thinking about what you're getting ready to do. In essence, in your mind, consciously or not, you play a part before you actually play it because you're thinking about what's coming next in the song. And in doing so, um, it's what you actually hear is a combination of what you heard in your head and what actually happens. Well, when you take that away and you just sit back and you listen to yourself playing the drums, much like when you uh, watch yourself or, or listen to yourself talking, you're going to say to yourself, wow, I sound like that. And you're going to find things that sound good. And you're going to think, find things that you wish sounded better. And you're going to look for ways to improve that. So I say all that to say recording yourself is one of the most important ways, one of the most important tools that you could possibly have to become a better drummer. Another tip that, uh, that you're going to often receive um, when you're uh, talking to people about how to be a better drummer is um, they're going to say to, to play along, probably they're going to say play with people. Um, to some degree, what they're saying is play along with music, and to some degree what they're saying is actually playing with people. And there, there's a little bit of a difference here, 
and, and both have value. And so let's just kind of talk about that for a second. Um, I think that there is absolutely no substitute whatsoever for playing with live musicians. Why? Because it's a dynamic experience. Um, when I play my instrument, um, I forget things. I make mistakes. Those mistakes then set up another set of scenarios. It's kind of like if you were driving down the road and you got to a fork and you could go this way or this way. Well, you should have gone that way, but you go this way. Well, that sets up a whole new realm of scenarios. But when you play with people, it goes deeper than that. You have, let's say, a guitar player, and let's say a bass player, and let's say a singer, and let's say a keyboard player, and you have all this dynamic of different people doing different things. And so I say, let's say, when you play with other people, you have to think on your feet. Um, a song goes a certain way, it has a certain arrangement, and there's maybe eight bars to the intro and 16 bars to the verse and, and blah, blah, blah. But when you play with people, um, you have to be able to think on your feet. Another thing, um, you have to, and you have to be able to tailor your parts, not just to what, uh, what was in the song, but also to what uh, the musicians around you are doing at that particular time. So you have to develop, in essence, you have to develop your listening skills. Now, playing, doing drum covers and, and playing along the tracks, you don't get that um, exercise. Um, a track is static. It's, it's, it's never going to change. You can hit the play button and play it a million times, and every single time it's going to come out the same way. There's challenges that come, come with that, too. Um, I say all that to say, um, a, a benefit of doing drum covers is it is going to improve um, improve improve your drumming skills it's you're going to be able to play yourself back and see and hear how what you're doing interacts with the music and then if you're so fortunate as to be able to play with other musicians and that's just going to take it to a whole other level another benefit to uh to doing drum covers um is it's an exercise now um I see and hear people say all the time that playing the drums in particular is a physical exercise. And I would say that maybe on some levels that's true, maybe on other levels, maybe not so much. I would argue honestly that if playing the drums is a big physical exercise for you, then maybe you should probably really address some of your technique um, because maybe you're having to work at playing the drums harder than, than you should have to. But nonetheless, I can't stress enough, whether it's a physical exercise or not, it is definitely a mental exercise. And so if you're doing drum covers and you're, uh, one of the things that I've been doing here lately, I've had a, a, a way more free time on my hands than I've probably ever had before. And so that has led me to doing more drum covers than normal. And so there's a, 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 a YouTube artist, which I'll leave a link to uh, down in the description below, uh, Surfer Club. And I'm probably saying that wrong, but nonetheless, it's Spanish. Um, this guy does um, drum covers, but basically he'll play the song. And down below is, uh, is notation that follows along with him playing. And then at the end of that, he will break down each one of the parts. And a, a typical song is, if it's a really uh, simple song, it may be as, as, as short as maybe 10 or 12 minutes. And if it's a more complicated song with more parts, then it may last up to 20 minutes. But, uh, but anyhow, so one of the things that I've been doing here lately is I've just been going on that website and just picking a song and, and learning the song and then recording a cover of it. And so I say all that to say, I think that, that uh, doing drum covers, recording drum covers, um, it's a mental exercise. It's, uh, you're constantly learning songs. Um, it's, I would liken it to doing the crossword puzzle or to doing the Sudoku puzzle or to doing something else that, uh, that kind of helps, helps you uh, to keep your, your mental faculties a little bit, if, if, uh, if nothing else. Um, and then last but not least, the third uh, benefit to um, recording drum covers is you're recording your progress. And I've been doing covers now for uh, a little over two and a half years, and I, start, I, I think I, put, I posted my first drum cover in October of 2017, and as, as of the recording of this video, this is April of 2020, so just over two and a half years, and I've recorded 215 songs, and I can clearly see um, progress from my early covers to another phase of covers to another phase of covers to today. And um, 
um, you know, and part of that progress uh, is, is my playing, but another part of that progress um, is, is just my ability to, to make videos and, and, to, and to work with that technology. And so I say all that to say in the last just over two and a half years, I've uh, invested a great deal of time in doing this, but I feel like I've improved at the skill not only of, of playing the drums, but also of, of making videos and making, and making covers. One last thing that I want to throw out there too, but back to the whole playing with people versus versus doing covers. One of the things that I like the most about doing covers is that there there is it's it's virtually limitless um, the possibilities of what you can do when you play with people. Um, that's the ultimate experience in my, in my in my opinion. However, there is a big limitation in that when you play with people, it's the ultimate compromise. Um, Whatever band you play in or whatever group you play with is going to, unless it's an instrumentalist group, but for the most part, if you're doing um, in just about any style of music, um, number one is the, your vocalist is going to have a certain range. And so that is going to include a certain batch of songs in the list of what you can do. And that's also going to um, disinclude or, 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 or that's going to make, mean there's certain songs that just can't be done because they're outside of the vocalist range. But then the other side of it is however many people are in the band, um, myself included, the drummer, um, guitar player, bass player, keyboard player, all the other instrumentalists, we all have what's called a technical ceiling, which basically just means that we have the ability to play somewhere between here and um, all the way up to the very top of, of our capability. And no matter who you are, um, no matter how accomplished a player you are, everyone always has a technical ceiling. And that may vary within different styles and, and, and different techniques. Um, I, at my bass drum skills are, are not good. I mean, that's probably one of the weakest, weakest links of, of my playing. And I don't care if you're talking about single bass or double bass, but when, when songs um, get uh, really intricate bass drum parts, that's pro that probably, for me, starts to really narrow that list of, of what I can actually play. And then obviously stuff like really technical like swing jazz or Latin or stuff like that, I, I can't do that stuff either. So I say that to say those are, those are things that are, that are inside of my technical ceiling. I'm, I'm a good straight ahead pop rock kind, kind of drummer and that can include a, a little bit of country and, and some very, 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 very basic uh, um, just like Spangalang type jazz and, and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm just a real straight ahead uh, meat and potatoes kind of, kind of pop drummer. Uh, I have a technical ceiling. Every, if you play with other people in, within your group, every one of those people is going to have a technical ceiling as well. Not every guitar player can rip like Eddie Van Halen or Steve Vai. Not every bass player is Billy Sheehan or Geddy Lee or Flea. Um, not every keyboard player is, and I don't, I don't even know enough about keyboards to say who would be regarded. And, you know, not, every, not every piano player is Elton John. You know, or Billy Joel. I mean, you know, so every musician that is within your group, A, has a technical ceiling, B, we all have taste, and there are certain songs that we want to do and certain songs that we don't want to do. I say, let's say when you record covers, all that goes away. And it's basically just on you as far as what you can play, but it also is an opportunity to really stretch out and do some things that you wouldn't have thought that, uh, that you would have done in the past. And I give us a very big example of that. Um, everybody that's watched any of my videos knows that I'm a huge fan of the 80s. Um, I also like 70s music, 90s music, um, a little bit of 60s music. Um, I'm a huge, I'm just a huge music fan, number one. But number two, it's kind of come to my realization, it's kind of come up on my radar, especially coming into this year, that I really didn't have very many covers that I would call quote unquote modern music. And when I say modern music, I'm saying anything from this century from 2000 to 2020. And so I know that the, the more um, current material that I'm recording now certainly isn't all that current um, based on a lot of standards. I mean, recording a song from 2012 um, cer certainly isn't uh, quote unquote new music at this point. I mean, that's, that's eight years ago, but in my eyes it is new music. That's, you know, I, I, uh, I did a 90s cover the other day and somebody commented on, on it saying something, making some reference to 1992 and that being 30 years ago, and, uh, and, and I jokingly responded back, you know, in my mind, 90s music is still new music. And that's true, because my frame of reference, when I grew up, um, you know, the classic rock was the 60s and 70s stuff, 
the stuff that I really embraced because it, it lined up with my teenage years was the 80s stuff. And then as I became a 20 something year old and, and moved forward in my life, 90s music was the quote unquote new music. So I say, let's say in, in my frame of reference, 90s music is new music. But I'm trying right now to put uh, at least some emphasis on stuff that, uh, that's come out in the 2000s. And so I say all that to say that uh, you know some of the some of the pop songs, some of the Ed Sheeran or Bruno Mars or stuff like that. You know, I really don't have an outlet for that stuff as far as the band is concerned. Uh, the band that I play in, uh, or the bands that I play in, don't do anything like that. However, um, through the magic of drum covers, I do have the opportunity to explore some styles that that I probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't wouldn't ordinarily be able to to uh, to do. So that's it for part one here. Benefits of of uh, of doing drum covers, number one, it will make you a better drummer for very, for many many reasons, as just, as I've, I've already discussed. Number two, um, it, learning songs is like a, is like doing a, a crossword or a sudoku. Um, it keeps your mind active uh, and to some degree your body active. And and, and recording your, recording yourself is a good way to kind of track your progress and see see how uh, how you're doing over the years. So uh, that's it for benefits of doing drum covers, or my top three. There's many benefits of doing drum covers, but uh, that's my top three benefits. And I'm going to follow up with another video on the biggest challenges of doing drum covers. Thanks for thank, thanks for stopping by.